<laughs> yes, I am here. <laughs> we have a special guest tonight. <laughs> She'll be coming up in a second. <laughs> Uh, Welcome. <laughs> I had to do this, man. Man, oh shoot, we can't hear you, bro. Oh, you say can't... that again. How about now? Yeah, I can hear you now, man. All right, for sure. <laughs> man, since you know, I... <laughs> man, it's awesome. Yes. Let me introduce Alex Arden. Uh, Arson. Arden. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Woo! Yes, 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 you guys, we are here. Let me take this mask. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to, man. I, I almost did the voice changer, but I'm like, yo, you know, like, let me. <laughs> but I can do my voice like this anyway. <laughs> Dude, it was great to have you. Let me introduce you. Oh, let me put my glasses on first. I got these bootleg glasses. One side of it's broken, but hey, you know, we're going to do what we do. Um, <laughs> Alex Arson is responsible for the Chico area metal. Um, we're going to talk about that, but he also has a podcast called That Heavy Metal Podcast. Um, he's also uh, had his hand... And trying to, well, he's, you said this, I'm, I'm quoting you, trying to basically make the uh, world's record for the longest running concert. And um, he also hosts this, um, correct me if I'm wrong, podcast called Horror Flicks and Chill. And that's the reason that I came on and, you know, I had to do the mask. <laughs> yeah. Horror Flicks and Chill is, um, is mostly my um, horror YouTube channel right there. Yeah, I was checking that out a little bit, man. I didn't know whether to call it a podcast or not, but yes, that's a YouTube channel. It's a real thing, and I like that. I like the name of that. It's pretty cool, man. Um, shoot, man. And, and and on that, I have to ask you this. Even though I saw it on your page, I, I, I'm going to have to ask, what are your favorite horror movies, just for the audience? Oh, man. Uh, right off top, I would say... Candyman, that was the first one that really scared me. And I was a kid when I saw that. So I think that kind of opened the door for me. Um, I was afraid to go to sleep with the lights off. That's how oh, intimidating man. me. And then uh, Halloween, the, the original Halloween, that scared me to death. Yeah, Michael Myers, a very 1978. And then Scream is one that really made me a fan of horror movies. That was like no turning back. Because, you know, you watch certain ones throughout growing up, but, like, Scream was that one where, like, I really felt the adrenaline, and I'm like, yeah, I like this. So, yeah, those yeah, probably... Man. Oh, shoot, you kind of cutting out. Oh, can you... What was that? Yeah, yeah, I don't know why it's cutting out, but let me make sure that um my, my, my Y is on. Yeah, my Y is on. Okay. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Man, I saw Halloween around that time it came out, but I saw it on cable TV, so it was in 79, I think. Um, I was at my, my uncles would always watch horror flicks, or they would watch like karate movies like The Human Guillotine. I was traumatized as a little four year old kid seeing <laughs> both of those movies. I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. But you know, they were, <laughs> Halloween, I think, was probably the first movie I think I saw. I mean, if Jaws is a horror movie, I saw that too. <laughs> uh, yeah. To go to the water. Yeah. yeah, like for sure. If you if you saw Jaws, you definitely didn't want to get in the water after that. You no. don't want to go to the beach, for sure. Yeah, I, it's funny you mentioned that. And this is the late 70s, so I'm like a really little kid. Um, My dad, I remember we went to the beach sometime after that, and he had me on his shoulders. And I didn't know. I was so scared. He was kind of laughing. I'm like, dude. Because I'm thinking Jaws is in there, bro. Like, I'd not want to go in the water at all, dude. That's the, yeah, man. That's the impact of horror movies, for sure. You you watch it, and it has, like, a lasting impact on you. That's when you watch the good one. That's a classic. Man. So some of the ones that I saw on your page that was interesting, some of my favorites, 
um, American Werewolf in London yeah. is like one of my very favorites. Uh, me and my sister talk about the makeup on that a lot. We've had a ton of conversations about Rick Baker's makeup and stuff. And of course he did Michael Jackson's Thriller. Right. That dude was a game game changer put it like this it, that movie is such a favorite movie of mine i used to do werewolf impressions in high school and people would remind me oh man you still do that <laughs> i have people cracking up i did an audition doing that and i didn't make it because the guy got water thrown all over him but you know like oh you went all in but huh you went all the way in huh yeah, I went in. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I can't do it now because I'm going to laugh. But yeah, I went all the way in. I, I fell on the floor. I was like convulsing and it, like made myself look like my hands were like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Stuff is comedy, man. And, and Evil Dead 2, of course. That's why I posted that Deicide song, too. Um, and they, they quote from the movie um, and, and just that's my favorite out of all the series that's my favorite one i don't like the first one the third one was funny it was just a comedy yeah, yeah. but that second one yeah. i got dance you know i'm a i'm a dancer too i'm a street dancer i'm a pop locker break dancer and i got dance moves from that movie Shit. yeah dude and one of them i actually used for a movie or, or uh, um a pilot that i was in i'll i'll send that to you it's silly but <laughs> evil dead 2 Lost Boys is another one that I really dug as a kid, you know. Um, yeah, man. And, and Suspiria is a strange one, but the visuals on that movie is the thing that gets me the most. I don't really understand the whole plot, but the visuals and, of course, you know, Goblin with their soundtrack was amazing. So, you know. That's what got me into Italian horror movies was Suspiria. And I don't think anyone really truly knows what the hell that movie's about, but you you love it. It's beautiful. It's so much cool graphic scenes in there. It's just, it's like a dream. And that's what a lot of Italian horror movies are like. It's, it's very dreamlike. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. You said beautiful and it's just like, yeah, the, 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 it looks like a painting is being right before your eyes. And even the, it's gory, the blood part, it's almost kind of repulsive to look at, but then you're looking at it it almost seems like somebody kind of like it just it seems it just seems a trip dude like it's some kind of psychedelic nightmare i, I don't do drugs or anything yeah. like that but man but that was the, it's man that was the idea it was to kind of take the disney aesthetic from back then and add it to a horror movie so that's where all the bright colorful lights are coming from you know whenever they go into a room he's got this really rich blue and these reds and these greens all those colors it was kind of inspired by disney movies and so it kind of mm. has this uh spooky disney type of trip and there's certain uh disney movies back then that kind of had certain scenes and sequences that were a little bit trippy you know, like pink elephants when uh dumbo starts getting drunk and how everything yeah around that point like it's kind of like that that was what Suspiria was in a way that's kind of what it was inspired by so it's like nightmare fuel but beautiful and aesthetic way you know yeah that's a trip man I mean shoot like that that was just way tripping in I saw Blade on there I've been yeah. acquaintances with um with um how could I forget the sister's name and I was just talking I just messaged her not too long ago Oh, Mbouche Wright. Yeah. Like, occasionally I talk to her. She's out in L.A., you know, really nice lady, man. Beautiful, of course. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's a trip to, like, oh, my gosh, dude, you were in Blade, and I'm just chilling with you right now, you know? <laughs> um, Blade's a game changer for sure. Uh, shout out to Wesley Snipes. He, yeah. he was an action star when we really didn't have too many black action stars. Yep. Because Carl Weathers he guy at one point in the 80s. And then it didn't really work out. So then we got Wesley and Wesley all throughout the nineties was giving us action movies. And yeah, yep. he was, yeah, he was right in there. He put, he put comic book movies for us, comic nerds. I'm a comic nerd or a former yeah. comic nerd. I don't know what's going on now. Um, he put that stuff back on the map. You know, like I like a lot of like the Spider-Man movies was hilarious, but that Captain America movie is the only one that the, the first one in 79 or 80, Horrible. How are you going to have a, a helmet all the way through the movie on Captain America? <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, he was the first rated R, you know, uh, comic book movie in a way. And, like, we had Punisher with Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. But that was kind of, that was made for TV, I think, or something like that. It really wasn't uh, at the same level of money and uh, attention and marketing as Blade was. Like, Blade was a major studio movie. 
And it, it definitely opened the door for X-Men that will come out, you know, in 2000, you know, Spider-Man and, and so on and so on. Definitely. And he definitely. also was the first vampire superhero, still an anti-hero, but, you know, like before Twilight. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Twilight. You know, vampires all, all throughout the times, like they all switch it up and change it up. You know, it's, it's just this vampire. See, the reason why we're still talking about them is that they're always able to do something different and expand on the lore and things like that. So. I can't really hate it. You know, it got a lot of young kids into vampires in a way where, you know, they some parents weren't okay with showing their kids Bram Stoker's Dracula. You know, like how mm. I did up on Bram Stoker's Dracula. And, you know, it's too it's too much for certain kids. So Twilight introduced it in a soft, gentle way. And then eventually they'll get into, you know, Bella Bella Lugosi and Christopher Lee and I all of them. Christopher Lee. Yeah. That's funny. I was just yeah. Yeah. That's the man. That's the man. Christopher for me, made like, dude, Bella Lugosi's dope. I'm not taking it away from him, but the thing about Christopher Lee, yeah, excuse me, anything that he's done, it just it's just a, it's just a dissonance with whatever he's done, especially when he played uh, like uh, in the vampire. It was just like that was the real like it made you like, dude, that's real. Like that guy is a real vampire. Yeah. Nicholas Cage looks. like like him in that other weird vampire thing that came out with him but dude yeah christopher lee is mm -hmm. i never seen the wicker man but even seeing pictures of that oh, movie yeah. it's just like yeah he's i know it's scary <laughs> or weird yeah, you know he's the man he's the one that played dracula the most he played him like 10 11 12 like maybe 10 times actually man. He, uh, for hammer hammer yep. films so he, hammer is no joke yeah hammer Hammer, my first introduction to Hammer is my grandma was a horror horror movie and you know she had a lot of books she was an avid right. reader and she had like she she would watch the Hammer House picks of uh, Hammer House of Horror uh, series that would come on I think it was on Lifetime or not Lifetime um, theater man what's the name of that movie A and E or something like that it's like in the 80s and I'm like wow and all those look just there was always something crazy about those Hammer Hammer flicks you know. Yeah. Man. Well, shoot. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying they brought Dracula and Frankenstein into Technicolor. That's what their whole thing was. You know, uh, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushion, they took all those Universal Monster movies, but they brought them into Technicolor. And so they had their own spin on, you know, the Universal Monsters and, the, you know, Dracula and Frankenstein and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They just, they really took gothic horror and put color into it. Man. So, and that the acting to the color made it even more real. I'm like, <laughs> you look at Christopher Lee and it's just yeah. like, dude, <laughs> really? <laughs> no, this cat is a freaking, and I, he has an amazing voice. Reminds me of another guy that you mentioned in um, the thing that you sent me, which is an amazing essay about heavy metal. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Arthur Brown. Not too many people mention him. He's one of my favorite performers, actually. Mm -hmm. The Crazy World of Arthur. The Brown and, and I don't know if you've ever heard um, the album that came after that first one, um, Galactic Zoo Dossier. Do, <clears throat> Dossier. I, I don't I don't speak French, but um, check that album out if you like that first Arthur Brown Crazy World. Check out him with Kingdom Come, not the '80s band, but um, that second album's amazing. It's just as scary, but imagine that, but even more on the progressive rock tip, you know. Definitely. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care. Of that. I'm gonna check that out for sure. So if you don't mind me asking, man, what got you into the, 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 first of all, what got you into music? And I noticed that you said that you're trying to come out here to Cali to be in the music scene. But you also told me that you didn't play any instruments. Mm -hmm. But so were you going to be a singer or just still on, on the behind the scenes part where it comes to sound and, and, and just organizing events? Kind of like what you do now. Well, I mean, I grew up on it. You know, I, I mean, I probably was the only metalhead really in the family, but like there were certain things that were, you know, rock that was in the house, like, you know, U2 and Guns N' Roses and The Police and things like that, you know. But as far as metal, like growing up in the 90s, you know, like it was everywhere. It was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And their sound, you know, it was watching wrestling, you know, the Attitude Era and how you had you know, those compilation soundtracks with the music of the wrestlers that were played by popular metal bands. It was TRL, 
you know, it was MTV, you know, they still played music videos. It, so, you know, Pearl Manson, Rob Zombie, you know, uh, Corn, Limp Bizkit, uh, Prodigy, um, Orgy, um, you know, Nine Inch Nails, like uh, all of that, that Woodstock 99 scene, like I, that was already into all of that stuff at a very young age because it was everywhere, you know, it was what it was. And so I grew up on it, basically. It, it just was uh, a, a great place to really watch was MTV. It brought everything together. And that's what I meant about MTV was like how it really was able to take all genres and bring it all together and show you the popular music videos of these artists. So yeah, growing up, it was just everywhere. In my favorite video games, it was, um, you know, my favorite, you know, wrestling, you know, um, themes and things like that. And so I grew up on it. And then me wanting to play guitar and things like that, um, I uh, just basically had took to it because I found my first guitar. Um, it was a Dane Electro and um, got it fixed and everything. And then I had this idea about basically traveling out west and and going to LA and be on the Sunset Strip and and all that stuff. But the idea was to kind of think outside the box because everyone wants to go to LA, right? Everybody wants to, you know, make it in the music business. They got to go to LA. So, you know, I try to think outside the box a little bit. So I started thinking a little bit more about NorCal and see what could happen there because you have the Bay Area, you have you know, all these other places in Northern California that you could also, you know, work your way into the business. And then um, I was thinking about Sacramento for a little bit because I knew people that were there, but then I found out about Chico, which is a small town that's a little bit outside of Sacramento. So I was like, well, let me see what's going on with this college town, you know, and college rock and things like that. So I kind of wanted to find a place that was California, but at the same time, that's affordable at the same time. And so for me, you know, just going out there on my own, I don't have any family out here beforehand. So I was gonna be basically out here on my own. So I wanted to find a place where I could actually make it home and actually not really, you know, struggle as much. Uh, so I settled on Chico and it's been, it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun and it's been great. Um, sure, I was jamming a lot. I was, you know, working with certain bands and jamming and things, but I kind of got more into wanting to do something, you know, in, in, behind the scenes in a way. And what inspired that was uh, Chico Breaks the Record, which was a 30 day long concert that was at one of these bars here in town. So that's 30 days, 15 minutes per artist, nonstop music. And I watched that for a few days and was like, wow, a lot of music here. Like for you to be able to have an entire day for 30 days straight of just nonstop music, that's, I'm in the right place. So that's what I was gonna ask you. I was gonna ask you, how did that go? And, and, and was, was the venues open? like 24 yeah. seven, like, like the venue was open 24 seven. Did you guys get into the, um, did you call the Guinness Book of World Records? Like, what did you guys do in that regard? That was the idea was to, it was in communication with Guinness Book of World Records. I was there as like, um, just hearing about it and, and checking it out. Cause that was the attempt. It was to get all the rules and everything that they need, you know? And, and so I was just there as a witness. Uh, they needed as many people as possible to come in 24 seven. You know, so the, yeah, the place was open 24 seven and uh, just all live local music. And then Guinness kind of didn't really give the uh, attempt any credibility at all. It was some type of technicality or something went on or whatever. And then the second attempt was the following year, which was 17 days straight. And that's when I'm like, okay, I really wanna be a part of this in some way, shape or form. And so whatever it is that I can do to actually help out, I'm willing to do. And so I learned how to work the soundboard for the first time. So that was the first time of me learning how to work sound. And so that felt good. And I was there from like 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Wow. Um, learning to do that stuff. And so uh, that was what really made me want to be a little bit more behind the scenes and see what I could do to actually help elevate the music scene that we have right here in this town. And so mm. that gave birth to or gave the inspiration to 
Chico area metal, where I basically want to showcase, promote, and often book as many shows as possible to let people know that we have a lot of great music right here. Wow. I'm still trying to figure out, like, it seems like you guys had all, when you, when I read you, it said attempt, and I'm like, okay, if you've already done this for 30 days and then 17 days, how is that not an attempt? I mean, that you guys did it. I mean, in my opinion. So what did you mean by attempt? Well, that's the thing, because it, it, you, when you try to do a record, you're usually going for Guinness, right? You want to be in Guinness Book of World Records, but you got to remember that like there's other people that are out there that will give you the credit that you deserve for doing what it is that you're doing as a record. You know, it's so the second attempt is what really is in you know, it's really out there. If you look it up, uh, it's Chico uh, breaks the record, uh, Chico strikes back. And it gives us that 17 day uh, attempt that we did last last time. So the second attempt is what really let people know that we really did it. And even still, that's the longest, one of the longest concerts straight is just 17 days. There's wow. other people that do, you know, there's different lengths of time that people have done it, but we also are, known for doing that as well there's so many other places that have had really long concerts it's just that we're up there too you know but for seven 30 days like we wanted to with guinness so once guinness had kicked back and said nah we you know whatever whatever it the second one was the one that we really got more attention for but chico no definitely did it twice. so it's it's listed then right in the guinness book of world I, records I don't think so. Not with Gu not with Guinness, but with oh. other record record keepers, like other record organizations. Yeah. Why is Guinness being snotty about that? That's just weird. I don't know, but I, that's the thing about the second one is that um, it, they it gave me an opportunity to actually be a part of it and do something, and so I'm you know it is what it is. But in a way, it worked out in a way for me where I could actually participate, help out, learn something and also give back into the community in a way where it's all music related, something that I'm passionate about. So that's really how I, cool. Yeah. So did you rotate with another sound man? Like, like, like when, um, 12 hours? That was my shift from 6 PM to 6 AM. And then someone else. Wow. Come. That's insane, man. Thing that's running. really cool. It, and it's cool to, to know that like you actually did that. Like that's a trip, man. When you really think about it. Yeah man wow and um shoot this i mean you mentioned some i've never even heard of anyone doing that until i i read what you you know what you sent me like has there been anyone you said that there was other people that did that too like yeah, tried to yeah it, uh, um, i can send you a link that they also list other places that have also have had lengthy uh, uh lengthy concerts and things like that um man of war um they went for five hours straight like a one band playing for five hours straight, you know. Gee, that's what I. I think one of the guys in an old band that I that that I was in, I think he may have tried to do something. It was like thirty bands, like for a whole night. I forgot the name. It's a documentary. I wasn't in it, but um, he a bunch of my friends were. Yeah. It's called Thirty Something, and I, you know, I, he's just a guy that I was in a band with. And come to think of it, I think that's. I don't know if that was a record or not, but it was like a lot of bands for one show. And I'm like, dang, that's crazy. You know, um, 30 bands and some, yeah, I think they played, yeah, they played just short sets or something like that. It's yeah, crazy. But that's the thing. It's so many different people who have like this, these ideas of like, how far can we stretch it? Like, how long can we do this? And how, you know, everyone's, you know, there's so many other people other places that have actually gone and have done that and some people give you the credit for it some people don't and so you know it's all in you know who recognizes it but at the end of the day the people that showed up they're the ones that are going to tell you and they're going to keep telling people like yeah that actually happened and i was there that is true you know so that's, that's what yeah. so here's another question you came from baltimore to california what what um how what would you say the difference music wise um where you're from versus like california especially and you don't i don't i don't hear much about chico except for the college stuff you know there was a nun i think that sent like an an, an eastern orthodox nun that sent a friend of mine a shirt to give to me that's that's the only association i have with that but that um um 
and and I had some Ethiopian like church music, which is amazing, that okay. she sent as well. So, um, but like as far as the Chico scene, or, or just Cali in general versus, well, okay, it's two questions in one. Me and my long-winded questions. How? What would you say the differences with Cali versus Baltimore? And also, what would you say about the the, the Chico scene or, or bands that you would like to talk about, or or just the scene in general? Well, the difference from Baltimore and uh, Chico as far as the music or just lifestyle and culture? Oh, or both. Yeah, music wise, and what made you like not really want to chill with chill chill out there versus like here for music as far as like you know. Even where you are right now, it's it's relatively like I don't hear too many people from Chico, but it's cool to hear yeah. stuff like this. You know, I'm from California, so I'm a familiar more with LA and Orange County, and I'm from Long Beach, and of course, you know, we have a all you know a, a whole music history between, especially LA and Long Beach. But um, it's I never hear about Chico, so it's interesting to hear where you're coming from. But also, what was the scene like? in Baltimore that made you want to move to California? If, if that, I hope that's not a weird question. The particular scene back home on the East Coast, like, there was nothing wrong with it. It was just, you know, I, I, I was, you know, just thinking, well, what's really stopping me from really actually traveling more and getting out and seeing things that I haven't seen before, you know? And, uh, you know, and so I was just, it was just me wanting to do stuff like that. You know, I, I wasn't in school anymore. Uh, but I was just like, I just wanted to do something different. I just wanted to really actually take that take that chance and just go out and do something. I'd never done that before. And so that's why I took a Greyhound bus. I traveled cross country because I'd never done that before. You know, so that was something that I wanted to do. And, it would be, and what really inspired that was, you know, I was a big fan of a lot of the L.A., you know, metal bands at that time, a lot of, well, glam metal bands, because that was, you know, Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue and Poison and all that shit. You know, that was fun for me. And I, you know, I was kind of inspired by that stuff, you know, songwriting wise. And so, you know, and there's always that beginning of the video of Welcome to the Jungle where Axl Rose comes off the fucking bus and he has his, I'm like, I could do that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why not? You just end up, because he's from the Midwest. So for him to go from the Midwest all the way to LA, uh, you know what I mean, I'm like, well, I could do that too. There's nothing really stopping me from going out west, and so it was nothing really wrong with the scene back home. It was just I wanted to go somewhere where there were palm trees and warm weather. So like, you know, that was just, you know, um, and of course, try to get as close to Hollywood because you know I love movies, I love film and things like that. It just kind of felt like, you know, the right decision at the time. So that's what I went with. It just go with your gut. Something was just calling me to go out there. And so that's what I did. And so um, the thing about the scene here is just that it's a lot of death metals, a lot of um, a lot of love for um, grindcore, a lot of hardcore, a lot of punk. And it's also there's goth here. There's uh, EDM. There's all types of music here. You know, it's just, just it. And that's the thing with uh, with Chico Area Metal, because when I moved here, it was Chico Area Punk that was showcasing all of the local punk scene here. And there was Chico area goth that was exposing, like, you know, showing all of the, you know, goth, you know, uh, subculture here. Um, there was a lot of EDM, um, a lot of blues, a lot of uh, country and um, folk music. It felt like everything was kind of being, you know, showcased a little bit more. And I'm like, well, let me get in where I fit in. So. I already was a fan of punk, so I supported the punk scene, Chico Area Punk, and then I supported the goth scene because I love post-punk, which would be eventually... Yeah, you know, I'm into that too. Right. So so I was a fan of Chico Area Goth, so I supported that, and so I just said, well, let me do Chico Area Metal, and then, so that's where that came from. So I wanted to be involved in the scene by basically help promote and, and support the local metal scene here because I didn't feel like there was a lot of, you know a lot of attention or a spotlight on that particular genre as far as all the music here that's concerned because it's everything but it just felt like there wasn't much of an outlet that really showcased that it wasn't really a platform to really showcase what that was and so that's where i felt like well i'll get in where i fit in i'll do that so and i was already you know into metal i grew up on it like i said and so i was writing stuff and i was practicing guitar but I'm not really that good. So I didn't really front the band or anything like that. So I just kind of, you know, 
felt like, yeah, I'll just do that. That'll, that'll be cool. And so that's where I am now, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of death metal. It's a lot of de- uh, a lot of grind, a lot of hardcore experience, uh, hard- hardcore and um, things like that. But yeah, it's really dope. It's really supportive. It's really a great, it is so much support for one another. A lot of them, they all love to play and they all love and support one another. It's a lot of camaraderie here. It's really, really welcoming and just, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a great place to be. How, who, if, and, and segueing on that too, what bands do you dig? You seem like you're into all kinds of different stuff, but as far as even metal and punk, you seem like, like you're into like a lot of different stuff too. I'm definitely in the death metal, especially grindcore. I'm a, I actually have a grindcore thing that I did in the nineties right. and was anonymous for 20 years with it. But I, in the last few years, some people figured it out, but that's another story. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. And yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of weird. It actually is coming up on its, um, I think, is it 25th anniversary? It was in 96 I came out with it. I, well, never officially came out, but just gave it out with tapes. But it's coming up this December on, on so many years. I can't add it up right away. But, dude, what are you, who are your favorite bands? I mean, I don't care, like, whether they're all kinds or just, you know, just, sorry, I'm long-winded. Are you, <laughs> you're just, like, uh, pop, like, just or locally bands or just my favorite bands? Oh, just your favorite bands in general. We're going to get to the local stuff, too, but oh, yeah. All over the place, for sure. But I definitely am a big thrash metal fan. Mm. I love mm. crossover thrash and things like that. Definitely, that that's what I really like to lead with a little bit more is the thrash type of stuff. Um, and then everything else is dope. I love black metal. I love uh, doom metal, you know. Um, I love uh, just... Yeah, that's probably my favorites right there. Doom, death, black metal, and thrash metal for sure. Or like definitely my favorites as far as metal is concerned. And then, you know, I love punk and hardcore and goth as well. So, Man, speaking of thrash metal, have you heard uh, uh, the... It's not really new. They were just re-recorded, but Mr. Bungle, like they, they re-released their demo. I didn't... I'd never heard that demo before. I'm just familiar with the other... You know, right. kind of avant-garde stuff, but I was like, man. And of course, Mike Patton, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it, it was like in the past year or two. So, like, I'm just really getting getting into Bungle for sure. Because I had a friend I used to work with that was a big fan of theirs, and so I would find out about them through him. And so I was just kind of doing my research with them that way. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, they had that. I didn't know they started off as a, a, a thrash metal band, almost like on a death thrash type thing too, you know? I mean, I like a lot of like death thrash bands, like early Slay, well, Slay Rain and Blood, Sadist, um, yeah. you know, early creator, yeah. you know, like stuff like that. Like I like a lot of Vengeance Rising. That's what actually the band that really, them and Vengeance Rising and Creator catapult me into to death metal, you yeah. know, like it just, like those voices and it just but crazy. Me- but yeah. Possessed and Sepatora that kind of eased me into death metal a little bit. I already knew about death, but like through Thrash, it was definitely them that made me appreciate, especially Possessed, because I think they honestly are the first death metal band, to be honest. Yeah, those guys, man, Seven Churches. And then um, I just saw Calavera Conspiracy. How you like it? Man, man they, dude, <laughs> check them out if you get a chance to. It, it was, dude. Those guys, and it's funny, I've heard the original stuff, mm-hmm. but I love them the fact that they re-recorded that, and it sounds even more monstrous. Dude, Igor has not lost it. Max is still kicking butt, you know, like, I had the honor of actually, it's funny, in the last year, um, or, you know, between this year and last year, maybe, see Sepultura as they are now with Derek. Right. Then I saw um, Max with Soulfly, and they did, he was playing with Dino. It was awesome, from Fear Factory and Brujeria. And then I saw, like, Calavera, so I'm like, dang, this kind of makes up for me not seeing Sepultura back in the day, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, that's all the bands that I want to see live, for sure. Those are definitely all the bands I would love to see live pretty soon, for sure. Man. Definitely. Shoot. So here's another question. Sorry about all my questions. No, it's all good, man. Is, is Dimwitted a moral exploitation, like, the, the, the um, 
that's what I saw on, on the essay that you sent me. Is that something that you started, like a publishing thing? Like, what is that? Wait, what is it? Um, dim-witted immoral a, a, a exploitation. That was the site. You sent me like uh, it was that history of heavy metal um, that I was reading out of. It was like one of the first things you sent me when we were corresponding. Uh, I'm trying to and remember. It came in it came in pages, and it was like a bunch of pages. I'm like I'd never seen anyone send a bunch of pages before. It was cool though. Oh, uh, let me see. I don't. <sighs> Man, I know I definitely was sending, you know, just basically like proof of like the foundations of rock and roll and metal and where it comes from. Yep. I remember definitely that and that that stuff that I've, I've always loved doing is just like always trying to get to the root of it all, no matter what it is, always try to get to the root of it. If I'm really into something like I go all the way in. And so that was what I remember doing is just like sharing just that type of written proof of that, you, you know, it, it, there's a long line of this and, you know, there's a lot of musicians that are people of color that have laid the foundation and things like that. And I always usually try to, you know, put that out there as much as possible to, to you know, let, oh, like, you know, we, you know, a lot of us shouldn't feel weird or strange, you know, for liking this music and things yeah. like that. I believe that. So, so that's the thing too. And so um, luckily for me, I, I never had any type of experience where someone was trying to gatekeep, you know, and things like that whenever I went to shows and concerts and things like that. So that's that's something that I always wanted to make sure that everyone feels comfortable in their own shoes when they come out and do stuff like that when you're a person of color, whether you're Mexican or Puerto Rican or, or Dominican or Asian or or whatever, like you shouldn't really feel alienated for liking the music at all. It's for everybody, but exactly. it's just a thing of knowing that you do play a part in the foundation of this genre. And there's people that still are out here doing it, even to this very day. That's the reason I started this. And shouts to Southside Smitty from the band End Result. If you've never heard End Result, you guys, the real original, what people are calling noise rock right. now, these guys were kids doing this stuff in Chicago, and they were a part of the early Chicago punk scene. Right. Shouts out to them and, and, and my friend Jimmy Skafish, if you see him. <laughs> um, so thanks for even coming out, bro. It's good to see you out here. But, um, yeah, that's why I started doing this page, because I feel like, you know, a lot of people don't associate that with us. And for me, I look at, like, I mean, like, my parents definitely didn't teach me um, to be against rock and roll, you know, like, but out in the world, you know, a lot of cats are like, why are you listening to these, this quiet music, whatever? And I'm like, wait a minute, yeah. dude, the, the yeah. roots of this is not white people. What are you talking about? And we're still playing it. We always have. I mean, that's one of the things I also on, on my page show. I show the earlier stuff, but I especially am focused on a lot of the stuff between the 60s yeah. through the 90s that people kind of just missed. Right. That You'll see a lot more of that than – and I'm going to get to – I have some older ones too. Like I'll go back to the 30s and 40s. I've done yeah. Memphis Mini. Oh. I've done like, you know, Rosetta Tharp. Yeah. And I got more to do. Oh. But I definitely have a lot of stuff that I'm I'm going to be showcasing from – more stuff from the 60s and 70s, which I've really focused on. Exactly. Whether it be punk, psychedelic, progressive rock, early heavy metal, you name it. Exactly. And I'm, cause I'm into all that. And a lot of that kind of music really informed me as a kid in that time, exactly. you know? So yeah. I really appreciate the fact that you're doing that. And, and like, the, it's funny because the original title, if you go, <laughs> if you go a little bit further down into like uh, my Instagram page here on, Inst on uh, Horror Flicks and Chill, it was originally called Hip Hop Heavy Metal and horror flicks, which was mm. the type of thing that I was doing. But I'm like, that's a really long title. Even though that <laughs> is, and even though that is me, and that's what I'm into, I'm into all three of these things, but I'm like, let me kind of shorten it. Up. And so I just kind of focused on more of the horror uh, aspect of it. But uh, I really still want to put out more of, you know, information and music on uh, metal bands, especially, you know, band members that are in these bands, you know, that are influential to me, a lot of people other than Bad Brains, you know, like all, all due respect, like yeah. I love Bad 
there's like there's so many other ones that are out there that don't get that type of respect or attention, you know, and that spotlight that's on them. It's so many people, you know. And the thing about social media and the thing about the you know the internet is like all of those guys are still are getting that attention now. So you're gonna always have so much more to learn about. There's so many of us that have done this but never really got that attention or that that uh that credit that that credit that they deserve you know we're we're looking at a band called death for example right yep. and look at that you know yep. it's way before that punk scene really became what it is and we're just now really catching up to what they did and the whole time yeah an addict somewhere the entire time and everybody what a trip uh, everything is just happening and going on and we're giving the Ramones their credit. We're giving the Sex Pistols their credit. You know, we're giving the Germs and all these people the credit. And that's great. You know, they're, they're definitely great in their own right. But it's like a piece of history is, is missing. And we're just now really catching up to them and giving them the props that they deserve. You know, and then there's a personal favorite band of mine called Hyrax that I... Oh, yeah, I know Caden. Caden's a really he's a friend of oh. mine. Dude, that's what's up. I love that dude. I've like, been that's one of my favorite. Painting since I was a little punk rock kid in high school. He used to work. <laughs> he used to work at Zed Records in Long Beach. I miss that record store so much. A lot of lot of cats like him. Um, I think Joey from the Locust. No, actually, it was Rusty from Le Shock, and, and Joey was also in that band with him. Shouts to Joey Karam. Um, um, what's the brother from Carrie Nation's name? How could I forget his name? Um, Frank, big Frank. Frank, I, I never met him. I think I saw him once, but like, yeah, Caton, that's where I met Caton. I was a little punk rock kid in, it was like 89, 90, I think it was around 90. I went over there for the first time in Zed and I saw this brother, you know, he had long dreadlocks at the time. I think he had left Hyrax probably like a year before. And, and it's funny because I was reading a Thrasher magazine and one of my friends was like talking about them. And I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't realize that I'm like, wait, that's the guy, <laughs> you know? And I think his brother played with them at one point. Wow. So, yeah, I've known Caden for a long time, but yeah, shouts to Caden and DePena. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. And, like, they play thrash, and I love thrash, so, like, that's how I came across them. And I'm like, dude, okay. Like, it's just we're constantly finding out. Like, we're just coming out across – well, some of us are coming across pure hell for the first time. And then, like, wow, you know what I mean? So we're always going to be digging up and finding out, you know, the, the 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 people who laid the foundation, who opened the doors for a lot of us today. And, and yep. they're part of history. And so that's what I love about social media. And that's what I love about YouTube and all that stuff. Because we're, yeah. we're putting a light on, on a lot of these musicians, these unsung heroes, oh, yeah. you know, that do the whole thing. And that's why I appreciate your page and everything that you're doing. Because, like, that's, you're like a historian now. Man, I... I appreciate that because i mean man you know like i how, how even i started doing this like for i've been taking notes on like us playing this kind of music since i was a kid i mean my little nerdy self was in, you know i love music in general so i'm reading about all especially 60s and 70s i was at the library reading about anything that had to do with that decade that had to do with psychedelic rock progressive rock heavy metal you know, um, and anything else that had to do with that, you know, like I was just in him, my dad and I talking about these bands, me looking at his record collection, me finding stuff on my own. And some some bands I didn't even hear until like way later. I just would read about like Hawkwind. Oh. I didn't hear about I didn't hear them until way later. I'm a little kid in the 80s reading about this right. band. You know, it wasn't you know, I didn't have money to go to get an album or anything. And, and they weren't really played on the radio like that. But then there were some bands that were. Yes was one of them, one of my favorite bands, King Crimson. I got in the, you know, through a lot of this stuff at the same time. And Jimi Hendrix, of course, too. Um, like, that's what made me want to play. So anytime, like, I read, like, I remember reading about the first time I heard, you know, I heard Love on the radio, but I was tripping when I found out that Arthur Lee and Johnny Eccles, you know, I'm reading in a book. I'm like, wow, I didn't know. I'm a little kid. So, so stuff like that. And then my friend Calvin Chaos, rest in peace. You know, hit me to Stone Vengeance, and I talked to those dudes. If you've never heard them, check them out. Stone Vengeance, They're, yeah. I have, yeah. Yeah, Barry and Thrash for real. <laughs> Man, and Black Death. You know, uh, that something that happened to Calvin, though, because I used to talk to him around the time of the pandemic, so we were talking a lot, and then we lost contact. So I haven't, 
I didn't really get the news or anything like that. About man, Cal Cal for, for for Calvin Chaos. Yeah. Man, yeah, he's a, on the original. I, I met him on the original Afropunk um, page, you know. So that's man. He's a good brother, man. I, I we would talk, but I never met him in person. We would just correspond online, exactly. And like, you know, I think we talked once over the phone, and and it's like I met him, but you know, like we we had a tie. Yeah. But man, he, he was actually a foundational dude in some of the things that, even though I was still on my thing, he was one of the first people that I've seen online doing that stuff. And I'm like, wow, dude, like, I didn't really come online with it until much later, right. but I still was kind of in that study and, and learning about a lot of these, this stuff on my own. But Calvin, you know, if, if, if I remember correct, I think James said he helped him a lot too with the original Afropunk website. He also, um, you know, he was in a bunch of bands in Chicago where he's from, you know, and, and, and just, you know, he was a really good dude. I wish I could have met him, you know, like, like he did a lot of stuff, especially, you know, all these, it's like him and Dante, um, you know, my friend Dante, he went by Dante Darkling who did blacks and black. Mm -hmm. More, he's a goth guy, you know, oh. um, and all these cats that, you know, like even now, too it's cool to see that and i put them as some of the earlier people online that i've seen kind of forming our communities like that and then of course the modern people aside from myself i have to give props to culture rock griot black rockers united um uh sopa alternativa in brazil who you know tanya was the first person i ever heard of 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 of, of how could i forget tina bell i'm like wow you know so it's cool. That's the thing I like about social media. You know, like it's kind of coalescing all of us together. I didn't mean to be long winded, no. but you got me going, man. <laughs> like around the pandemic, you know, I started doing, you know, my, you know, my Instagram stuff. I was getting more into Instagram because at first it was for like my photography and stuff like that. Cause I was into photography, but then I kind of wanted to switch into something else. Um, I was getting into my horror kick because um, my girlfriend never really grew up watching horror movies. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, all right. So now the mission is to bring you in. <laughs> so I'm going to bring you <laughs> I made a list of like the, the horror movies you have to see. And as I was doing that, it kind of like reinvigorated my love for horror movies because there was a point in time where I kind of would, hold off on horror movies until like October. But then for me, it became like a marathon because I was always trying to find what's the movie that she has to see to introduce her to it. And as that was happening, it was the pandemic. So we had a lot of time on our hands. And so that's when I came across, you know, Calvin, because, you know, it was certain music that I was making that was a little bit more gothy and hip hop inspired and stuff. And it was kind of similar to what he was doing and stuff like that. And so we crossed paths and um, we kept in contact. He created basically a spot where, you know, people that were into spooky shit could come and hang out and, 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 and correspond and talk to one another and also support one another. So it was a community you know, that was full of like spooky golf stuff and people that's into, you know, all these other things, metal and all that stuff. And so um, it kind of helped me by talking to him, kind of helped me create a community for like horror movies, hmm. you know, you know, for our people, for like black people, like you, you, it's, you know, like, cause some people think that, oh, we don't really watch horror movies like that. And it's like, yeah, we hmm. do. You know, um, my uncle was the one who introduced me to horror movies. Right. And who's unapologetic B? Uh, B? She says, hey, twin. Uh, Unap well, that's, <laughs> that, that's your girlfriend. Yeah, that's my sister, yeah. Oh, oops, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't know you were a twin. Uh, well, no, we just look very much alike as we're siblings. But but yeah, we're, we're definitely twinning if you really see us together like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's rad, man. Much of life. That's a true. Yeah, but um, but yeah, uh, so so by talking to him, I kind of got my brand together, and so that's when it became horror flicks and chill. And so with me doing that, I'm also a part of that horror movie community there too. You know, so it's a lot of us that are 
into horror movies and can't wait to see the next thing and and all into horror news and spreading that information that are also you know people of color too and i'm like all right wow you know because you know a lot of us don't because we grew up in a some, some of us grew up in a household where you know it's it's the devil and, and, and you know i don't watch that crazy shit you know like it's some of us grew up in that type of household where you know that that's that stuff is too crazy it's too scary and it's going to warp your mind and all that stuff but then my, a lot my, more about it and, and so my it's, dad like i grew up in a christian household and we right. still watched horror movies a lot like, we're, we're, I, I don't know if we're the exception <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so it's it's that thing of knowing that you're not so weird and not so different because you like this stuff and so that's what horror flicks and chill became. And so the idea was for me to put a spotlight on, you know, horror movies, especially, you know, black horror movies, because it's not, it, you know, it, it, it's not as much of a reverence for it. Like I, I got wanted it to be, you know, there's certain ones, you know, it, it, for me, it was just like me being kind of like a historian of black horror movies before Jordan Peele, right? Like it's, yeah. it's a long, of these movies that laid the foundation for us to have Jordan Peele right now. You yep. know, and what I'm doing is showing you all the stuff that's happening in between and 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 doing reviews on them and, and letting people know that this one is a major block in like what got us to where we are. It's definitely a stepping stone to where we are now. And like now since Get Out and Us and Nope and all that, it's so many, it's more, black directors and, and black led horror movies that are happening now that we really didn't get when we were kids growing up in the 90s and early 2000s so like it's it's a renaissance period now where it's like a lot of black horror movies are popping right now but what i wanted to do was to show the unsung heroes that really actually laid the foundation but a lot of people don't really know about so they're called classics and things like that so have you ever seen that documentary about um blacks in horror it's a if you haven't oh you oh it's such a great documentary man i'm glad that whoever made that made that you know um yeah that's what it's called yep it's a shutter exclusive and that's why i bought shutter and i did too <laughs> i bought it just for that reason yeah. <laughs> oh my God. this is what i'm doing i'm like this is what i'm doing uh, i was just right around that time where i was starting to do all that stuff and putting it all together and that uh documentary came out i'm like i have to see this this is this is letting me know i'm on the right track like this is this is a sign right now so that's what i wanted to do and so yeah i'm i'm still a fan of shutter i love their exclusives and their original stuff man so definitely so yeah that's the whole process but i want to do more of you know heavy metal and bring it onto my page and horror flicks and chill as well because there's a there's a connection with horror movies and heavy metal as, as well oh, as you definitely. i mean you look at especially i mean of course black sabbath they got their name from a boris karloff movie and then of course you got the iron maiden zombie eddie character and of course a lot of heavy metal themes are are pretty much apocalyptic or horror or both you know like it could be biblical stuff it could be horror movies it could be other like kind of stuff like that too or, or just you know like fantasy type stuff is oh your sister said um my brother makes a list of halloween movies every year for his nieces and nephews and they love it he's amazing at it <laughs> represent man yeah man which also i was gonna ask you it's funny people were i guess we're kind of talking about music as well as horror again yeah. The term horrorcore, I've, I'm just going to say, like, the first time I ever heard of that term was with the Misfits, mm. Earth AD. But it's funny because most people are used to that term when it comes to, to hip-hop right. groups that even some of them include heavy metal, like Esham was probably one of the earliest to do that. But, like, I mean, it's a trip how, like, you have groups that were doing, like, Insane Poetry probably was the earliest. M my homie... Um, to RBX, he, he's awesome. His first album, early Kino XL, you know, with his art of origin and um, his very first album, and he's still ripping it on the mic and, and the way that he writes, of course. And of course, well, man, the, the Ghetto Boys, even though I, I can't listen to that one song that everyone talks about. I just can't. It's too much for me. Oh, man, Ghetto 
Boys for sure. Like well, that's well, that's when I first heard hardcore. Like I always heard Misfit as horror punk, but you, you know, um, I think Screaming Jay Hawkins though. Like we got to give Screaming Jay Hawkins his props. Yeah. So we absorb all of that. To be honest, you yeah. know, that was back in the fifties, man. You know, yep. So, so for, to come out in a casket and having smoke bombs and and uh, a skull and uh the baritone voice and the costumes and everything that he did yep. was cool he's the first one that added that into rock and roll yep. into you know that's before alice cooper before rob zombie before the misfits before arthur brown all yep them. before screaming little Butch, all of them all of them you know what I mean? so he opened the door for that and so you know that's another one that i feel like needs to definitely get the props and credit that he deserved when it comes to theatricality especially adding horror into rock music which where it's commonplace now but at a particular time like in the 50s and early 60s yeah he was ridiculed for that i mean even even by our own people they're like man what's up with this voodoo stereotype yeah. stuff you know and Exactly. He was, and you can call it camp now, but that stuff scared the living snot of people. I remember the first time I saw him on TV with some classic rock video show, and I'm like, wow, dude, this is no joke, bro. And of course, you seeing Arthur Brown and Alice Cooper and Screaming Lord such yeah. videos, you know, after that or hearing their music. Yeah, yeah he was definitely the first. I mean, um, when it came to any kind of horror themes and even gothic yeah. type dress or anything anything that had to do with that he was definitely the first screaming jay it's also you know sure like there's there's no doubt about that either like it goes down in history he is the og goth yeah you know, i know that Lynn, you know Susie sue and all them they get the credit for that because it was a different type of aesthetic and sound but it did what he did and laid the foundation for that you know what i mean for oh. sure yeah, he, he was the first, he provided the themes, probably the first to have horrific themes like that. He had the sound, his voice, he was trying to do what Paul Robeson did, but he just did it in rock and roll. And Paul Robeson's voice is very baritone and very spooky when it comes to certain gospel tunes that he sings, like Wade in the Water, that sends, sends shiv shivers up your spine. So imagine that, talking about like, you know, I hear voices and all that stuff and like, you yeah. know, his hit, you know, it's just like, dude, mm -hmm. this is not funny. And then he was, I mean, he did a lot of comedy stuff right. too, but it was still kind of like horrific. And every like alligator one and, and talking about like, like, like elephant ears with spaghetti. <laughs> just, just kind of still kind of gory, but kind of goofy at the same time. And that's, you know, horror and comedy. And so you go into stuff that you have like Ice Nine Kills right now, mm. where they can kind of horror and comedy at the same time. So like yeah, it goes all the way back to him, and that's that's what I influence. Well, it's you know I I have the posters like it's a lifestyle, it's a whole thing, you know, it's a whole thing, and so it's it's always cool to look back at him, and also look at Robert Johnson as well. Oh yeah, yeah that that guy will make Varg and on all those um yeah all those black metal guys like. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, theme wise, yeah, he was on that before any of those, and even the early '70s bands like Coven and all those guys, you know, and and um, Blue Oyster Cult or, or you know, Black Widow, you know, and even even Funkadelic, they mm -hmm. they're kind of on those themes too. A lot of people kind of don't realize that they were actually a few of those guys were part of uh the Process Church of the Final Judgment, which was pretty much a satanic cult, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I love early Funkadelic, man. They were heavy too. Yeah, mine was a Funkadelic, and just everything was like funk rock, like for sure. It was psychedelic, it was funky, but it was rock. Eddie Hazel on heavy. guitar really elevated that to another level, where it was just like, whoa, like it. It, it was where Hendrix kind of le left off. You know what I mean? Like once yep. he had passed. I felt like Eddie Hazel was like the next motherfucker in line. And if he lived a little bit longer, I think he definitely would have made much more of an impact on his own, for sure. Yeah. Eddie, I, I was talking to um, a friend of mine, um, Spacey T, and he was giving me a lot of cool, like, um, Spacey plays with a lot of people. He played with Sound Barrier, played with Fishbone and, oh. and HR. Yeah. But um, 
he was telling me like this stories like he's you know ab about him and eddie hazel and just you know jamming out and learning from him and i'm like man that's so cool dude yeah. and he's a guitar slayer in general but freaking like yeah dude like eddie man he's and he is like my second favorite aside from jimmy and then there's mick ronson from david bowie's band after that but man yeah. Uh, yeah, Eddie is underrated till this day, and he needs to have more props. You know, that, just stuff that he did is like, man. Because the fighters from Mars era, like, I was so hooked into that era of Bowie stuff, man. The Ziggy oh, Stardust man. fighters from Mars, man. That that was, but basically my favorite band of his for sure. Death. Oh, most death, man. And and they they all started, I think, on the man who sold the world, which is funny. I heard the Spiders from Mars stuff. Still love that stuff. I didn't hear the whole album, The Man Sold the World, until later, and that blew my mind because it was just, like, as heavy as, like, a Zep or Sabbath, like, album, you know? But Bowie's voice, which was cool, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Man. I was going to say with, with the horror core thing, like, like seriously, like, yeah, Misfits were, were horror punk, but the first time I ever heard of that term was because Earth AD was so fast, you know? Like, it was faster than all their albums. And I would even say, like, because there is a whole subgenre of even hardcore punk that I think that influence, which even though the term death thrash is usually applied for some of the bands that I mentioned earlier, there is a whole, because back in the day, they would call certain hardcore thrash as well because it was just played fast. Like, you know, um, bands like early DRI before they went metal or, or you know, Stark Raving Mad. Mm -hmm. But then you had bands that were on the darker side, like, I mean, starting from the misses, Septic Death, negative game mm -hmm. um and, and there's a few others that i can't remember right now but those guys are kind of they had horrific themes doing hardcore but just extremely fast like like man so for me that's like okay that was the original horror core and death thrash on the punk rock side of it so it's kind of a trip and then like when i heard i just wanted to explain what, why i even mentioned that with the misfits none of their other albums had that thrashy like fast like take except for earth ad so that was the first time i ever heard of that term with that you know yeah, for sure. it's crazy though man. that's for sure and then like what i what i loved was uh sam hayne they didn't I, I that project november coming fire and, and uh the other album was the album before that then it's november coming fire but like november coming fire was like oh man if i get more of this that'd be dope but anything he touches anything danzig does i think is gonna be special it's gonna be definitely something different and, and like hardcore i always heard it with with hip-hop that's when i yeah. first heard it always you know darker type of rappers and that's also something that i love as well like i if it's about horror i'm with it so you know there's blues that talks about horror and the devil yeah. and things like that there's there's rock that does it and there's metal that does it and and so hip hop can do it too. And that's why I play a lot of, if you look at my videos, my reels or whatever, on, you know, my Horror Flicks and Chill page, it's usually, you know, horror and hip hop combined because that's best of both worlds for me. And so I, I love putting out, you know, videos that have that horror core or horror funk type of sound to you what it is that's going on i love that stuff it's just one of my favorites but that's the first time i've ever heard hardcore really was when it was labeled around you know darker sounding you know hip-hop like for me i think the first time i ever heard a really dark sounding hip-hop song was hail mary by tupac oh wow wow dude what about natural born killers by ice cube and dr dre but i never really well that's the thing because like it, it didn't really it, it didn't really it didn't really fit the same for me like for me like when i really think of it like the first time it was just like the video and everything was just like whoa like it's so gothic sounding in a way it's like hip-hop goth type shit it, yeah it just had a and, and Pac has some dark lyrics too man and that's kind of yeah. like stuff that i like and then there was things that dmx did with it's dark and hell is hot like that that man. Like, was just like it's a ride man like it's just a whole vibe that he set that just felt so different from a lot of people that was out around that time like late 90s man like he had a whole different experience listening to his music at one point 98 99 for sure that was a darker image like flesh of my flesh blood of my blood how he's like in the tub and he has like 
blood all over him. It was just like, that's hardcore. Like, that's hardcore. That's an influence. Yeah. It's the stuff that I do, you know, with Hard Flicks and Chill. It's, it's inspired by hip hop, but I always felt that, like, if if Pac and, and, and X really wanted to, you know, they could have had, had you know, a, a rock band or something at some point. I always thought that that would have been a cool side project for them. That would have been a trip. They would have been great front men for like a punk or hardcore band for sure. Man, and speaking of, what's up? What's up, Jared? I see you, World Eater, New York City. Man, shouts to you, brother. We had him on yesterday. It was awesome. Nice. It, and it's funny you mentioned um, the if you ever heard, I don't know if you ever heard the RBX Files. Check that album out. But he actually did have a rock band. And I was asking him, I'm like, dude, can you release that? stuff it's called liquid metal i don't know what i need to ask him about that again rbx the rapper rbx from he you know he's with snoop dogg and all them um but he he his first album i think is definitely more on on the horror sounding especially that song burn but like i want to hear the stuff that he did like because he had like he said he had a whole album and it was all metal and i'm like i gotta hear that man's voice to a metal band <laughs> that'd be sick you know there's a lot of rappers out here today that always felt like if they really wanted to switch it up and get an actual band, like that shit would be amazing. Like, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of, of like those rappers that are out that I just, they just have that energy where I'm like, they should really be in front of a band. Like they should be a part of a band and doing this shit. It's just, and you can see like, that's where hip hop is going. Like a lot of rappers that are out, you can tell that they're influenced by other type of shit, but rap is what's going to make them a little bit more money and a little bit more exposure. So they kind of go with that wave, but it's just a lot of them, I feel like they have it in them because you can see, you can hear the influence of other stuff, you know? And I just feel like, yeah, like little Uzi Vert, that wouldn't surprise me if he made, you know, a, 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 a punk album or a rock album or anything like that. Um, you know, X, was XXX, didn't you on? Yeah, he, he, his, his trap metal thing is exactly. a trip. And, and that's another thing too, like it, new metal, that's what I grew up on and now it's trap metal. And so mm. it's always gonna come together. And that's the thing, like you really should never feel like you're, you're, you know, you're weird for liking it because like it all kind of comes from the same thing. It's all, it's all connected in so many shape or form. So, Have you ever heard of H099? They go by horror, but it's yeah. H. Those guys, I've seen them a lot. Dude, yeah. Yeah. those guys kill, man. I'm like, I've never seen, anyone play like maybe maybe i'm just like through a marshall half stack like turntables and then they have a drummer on man they killed man yeah it, dude but it's what outcast would be if they were a punk band for sure like yeah those guys man for sure they're dope they have their own thing going on and i love it and nova twins and fever and all yeah it's so many. no face no yeah. man yeah Definitely. What do you think about Tyler, the Creator's Goblin album and also Bone Thugs and Harmony? Would you consider them kind of on the horror quartet to some degree? Bone was a little subtle, man. Bone is like what Isaac Hayes was, bro. Like Isaac Hayes is like, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it was just like that gothic soul. They did the same thing with hip hop yeah. and just kind of putting their whole twist that was not as hardcore frontal, like hardcore is something like a, a cube or or, or or Isham even, but their stuff was like, I'm be, like, dude, this is a trip. <laughs> I would want to sing at my funeral. Like they 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 just had that soul to it, you know. Like they real and they come from the streets, but at the same time, they just had this thing where they mixed R and B, soul, and hip hop in a way where it just it meshed. It didn't feel forced. It just came out of them like naturally. But yeah, man. Crossroads video, that shit was weird. The man in the black and the sunglasses and shit, and he just, you know, Uncle Charles and all that shit. Like that shit was weird, man. It was, it was. Yeah. But I never really. It just had a darker image to it. And then Tyler, yeah, man, like for sure. That um, it was bastard, and then it was Goblin. Yeah, for sure. Those two albums, for sure, was just like carrying that torch. And he definitely have changed throughout the times. Almost every album he different, and that's why. I I love about him he's constantly changing and evolving every album is different but those first two albums for sure had a certain vibe and energy to it that was really cool and the therapy sessions you know that was in the 
you know, in the songs and stuff, it was just like, I liked it. It was different. And I, I, was, I wish something was that, I wish something like that was out when I was in high school or when I was in junior high, because that's something. Wait, you cut out, man. What was that? Oh, I said, I wish, you know, those albums came out when I was in junior high or when I was in high school, because that's what I would have been listening to at that time. It was right up my alleys, you know, so. Yeah, man, it, it's a trip. Like when I was in high school, I think the first first of horrorcore rap groups that I've heard was was um, Insane Poetry. Now, I think Drew's doing his own thing now, but Isham, but they were the first hip hop group. And I, I, I remember Isham too, and his album covers. But Insane Poetry definitely had more of a West Coast thing. They're from, you know, LA County. But the way that they took their pictures is really what caught me too, because they look like a death metal band. Just with one dude with crazy looking long hair and the two other brothers with all black on and a shaved head. Drew Drew or Psycho had a shaved head and, and MD um, had a shaved head. Their album looks like a death metal album. And the stuff that they're talking about, that's for freaking death metal. Like, dude, yeah. Grim Reality. And, and I like the fact that I forget who reviewed the album and they were talking about basically how the album was more of a critique on society and not just horror for the sake of horror it's a very grim album yeah but like i like the fact that they did critique society in the way like i'm one of those people i'm not even though i like horror films and stuff i'm not really in the gory lyrics for the sake of gore so i really did the consciousness and stuff to it you know like um and and even though the album you wouldn't probably think that right off listening to it but that was kind of where they were coming from and cycles a beast of an mc yeah. you know first time i heard him he was going off over psycho theme song on a joe cooley album and he was killing it man i'm like i got that's what made got me into insane poetry and then seeing how they looked i'm like these guys look like something that you know like a bet you know death metal bands that i listen to you know or something that i would be into i'm, I'm this punk rock kid still in the hip-hop back then yeah. in the early 90s and stuff you know man yeah. what a trip sure. <laughs> or are you are you a juggalo um i don't I wouldn't say I am a juggalo, but like I definitely know some like insane clown posse songs I like and uh, Twisted and you know that whole label, everything that they came out with. Like I listen to everything, man, because like it, it, like I told you, I music videos first of all, like the format within itself was like I can really sit and just watch music videos. I'm watching short movies basically. But then, like, the music is putting me on with different genres. So, yeah, I came across a lot of Insane Clown Posse. But I, I but as far as me saying a juggalo, like, no, because that, that's a whole lifestyle. Like, motherfuckers really yeah. are hitting their faces and just all about it. And just, Damn. like, I really... There you go. <laughs> like, I, I don't. But, like, I, I definitely grew up, like, loving their stuff, too, man. Like, for sure. Because, like, that was that era in time, man. Like, when hip-hop and metal and stuff like that was like combining and like now it's it's kind of you know everybody's to their own corner you know because the purists you know they feel like oh that's not metal you know that's not metal and so there was a lot of flack for what biscuit did and what you know uh you know other new metal bands were doing at that time and so it wasn't cool anymore and so everybody kind of went to their respective corners in a way and but i love when there's other people that are like, no, fuck that. We love this music. We love that music. And we want to collaborate and do something. Because, like, Collision Course was what I felt like kind of brought that back together again, that mm -hmm. that project in Linkin Park. Because everybody loved Linkin Park, no matter who you are. Like, no matter what color you are, where you're coming from, Linkin Park was able to connect with people on a different level. And so Collision Course, like, definitely kind of reintroduced that to a new generation of people that didn't that that kind of was too young for like the new metal era at that time and so um NERD even though they're not hardcore but I feel like they have a huge influence in like bringing both genres to um oh yeah RD and like buddy um you know like those type of guys where they have like a a certain platform where everyone's watching but they love you know alternative music and a love rock and, and and things like that and so yeah definitely um suicidal tendencies oh played a huge definitely. part in blending everything because you can be from the streets and you can still love punk yep body count I oh think, definitely 
You know what I mean? Like, like body counts, a whole thing, man. Like cop killer and all that shit. Like, bruh, like, and I felt like he was the right dude for all that stuff. He was the right, the right person to do all of that stuff, man. Ice T definitely can do any. Like honestly, <laughs> he can rap. He can he can be in a metal band. He can act. The dude can do anything. But yeah, body count, title tendencies, like they definitely brought everyone, brought everybody together in that particular sense. Did you ever get in a tricky, like tricky or a Portis head or anything? Tricky, I mentioned more so because he was he, you know, he, he hates the term trip hop, but like a lot of people put him in, in massive attack as, as the purveyors of that. But the thing about him that I admire the most, I mean, yeah, you know, he was definitely into like a lot of post-punk stuff, like the pop group with Mark Stewart's Mafia and all that. But like, he did a lot of that stuff, like his a album Angel, Angels with Dirty Faces. It was almost like kind of the same kind of, I wouldn't say horror, but definitely on a gothic tip and very dark in its own right, you know, like just kind of like, and, and what people would still call alternative rap as well, you know, like the way that he, he's kind of like one of those dudes that were really avant-garde before his time as well. I don't know if you're familiar with any of his stuff, but. I'll check it out for sure. I like stuff like that. Yeah, I'll yeah, definitely I'll continue. You. Well, what are local bands that you, you know, like out of the Chico scene, would you like recommend for us that don't know, if you don't mind me asking that? So many. Um, no matter what kind of stuff, goth, like punk, whatever, you know? Oh, man. Um, there's Junum that I just interviewed recently. I'm going to put that interview out there pretty soon on that heavy metal podcast. Um, if you like grindcore, definitely check them out. They just released the um, album um, over the weekend. So definitely mm -hmm. that's J-U-N-I-M. Um, then there's... Um, oh, man, so many. There's Aberrants, which is really awesome. Um, there's uh, For Thy Kingdom, that are also awesome. Uh, man, Murder of Crows, Gore Fetish. Uh, man, there's so many. I'm, uh, dude, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get everybody out there because, like, it's, it's, it's so many. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would definitely say that those right there for sure. And I'm trying to get a lot of them try to you know promote their music when they finally record because a lot of them are performing and things like that and then like they're ready to hit the studio and start releasing music that we can really actually you know check out on you know spotify Bandcamp, etc cetera, etc cetera. um cement sarcophagus um gore skin coffin um sunspear um my goodness it's so many um royal vices they're from sacramento um, a lot of these bands aren't exclusively from Chico. A lot of them are in the area, which is why it's Chico Area Metal. Like, they're close to where we are. So, like, they're, like, an hour, maybe 45 minutes away. But we all have shows together where we everybody plays together from, like, the surrounding areas. So, um, Red Bluff, Redding, um, and Sacramento are definitely really popular spots, too, for local metal as well. But uh, I definitely love to have them come to Chico and play Chico a lot. But um, yeah, uh, Cement Sarcophagus, Aberrants, Royal Vices, um, Murder of Crows, um, Gore Fetish, um, Sunspear, um, Junum, For Thy Kingdom, um, Booked by Mistake, which is a lot of fun. Um, there are a lot of, they're, they're great, great band to see live. I like um, that movie. <laughs> great to see live for sure. They're, they're an experience. <laughs> you got to see them live. They, they bring that theatricality into what they do, which is a lot of fun. I love that. When they're, they're having fun doing what they're doing, which is affectious. You just can't help but join in and be a part of that. Um, yeah, definitely. That's, a, that's off the top of my head, man. Like, that's some of the more, like, amazing, you know, live local bands that you definitely want to check out. Um, and and Gorskin Coffin as well. But, yeah, that's just off the top of my head it just you know it's so many other ones that are out here doing that shit and it's just really dope and trying to get as many of them to play chico as humanly possible and try to make you know much bigger shows as much as possible get as much people to come and
and we do a lot of all ages shows that way the teens got stuff to do that they can come and hang out and see a live show as well and support the show as well and that that also gives them a place to start where they can you know have a band and they can play and also have a place to play live you know as a teen you know you're a teenager you love music you got a band together but you can't play anywhere you know so um, shows is also really really dope as well so I, every show that i do i usually have all ages shows that's tight will you ever get back into like like would you ever want to be in a band at all like or are you just kind of more sure i've been th thinking about it i'm rusty as far as like playing i haven't played in a long time i haven't practiced i haven't really touched it as much so i have to first of all get back into actually having a schedule where i actually get back to practicing and get back to you know really getting getting everything together and then writing again i haven't I haven't been writing songs for a very long time um it's just been other like creative things that i've been doing and so so i just have to get back to doing that and then once i feel like all right i'm back to where i need to be then i'll be down to jam and and see where that goes and then eventually probably create a project where i you know actually start recording stuff and playing and all that good stuff but for me i get a lot of fun and just get a kick out of you know booking shows and promoting those shows it's got to the point where there's bands from you know seattle and and places in like Oregon that are wanting to come and play Chico. And that's awesome. And then like, I end up being like, my name ends up being in a conversation of like, who could we talk to to get a show here? You know, and, and like my name gets thrown in there and they're like, hey, someone suggested that I talk to you about booking a show. And I'm like, oh shit, okay. Um, well, yeah. And then like, I booked the venue, I booked the show and everything. And it's always great. So like all the way up to the Pacific Northwest, man, like, people know about Chico and want to play Chico. That's awesome, man. Well, shoot. It's so cool hearing about, like, you You make me want to come up there <laughs> just to, just to vibe, you know? Um, and it's it's great to hear about, especially, like, just your journey and everything, man, and, and like, what's going on in Chico and just, like, um, you know, all the stuff that you've been saying and, you know, the fact that you're creative and you're making – you know, uh, 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 an avenue for a lot of cats, you know, and, and it's really cool, especially people don't realize that music is definitely a community thing and it's helped so many different people in so many different ways, you know, like, and, and that's what I like about hearing like stuff like what you're telling me, man. And I'm sure a lot of people appreciate it, dude. It's, it's, it's such an outlet for so many different people and, and you never know what a person is going through in that show is one of those things that kind of, um, is 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 um uh, uh you know might be something that will really relieve them and, and jared saying hey he wants to book a show with you with his band his band's amazing exactly shine for the black madonna rocks man <laughs> it, it, it definitely i'm all for it i'm all for it i will do any and everything i can to make sure that i find a venue book it and have it set up and you have a great time and and definitely come back and so that's the thing and then like with the podcast this whole thing really started around the pandemic so as i was coming up with this idea of like yeah we should have this go on and we should do this and blah blah blah, blah. and then the pandemic hit and so the podcast really kicked off around that time like 2020 and so it was okay i know a lot of bands are recording and they still have music out but we can't really go and see it so let's talk about it and so mm. i created a podcast to basically have them talk about the projects that they have that they've been working on and recording and where they can hear it and where they can check it out because i was always still you know posting you know this band got this out this yada yada, yada. but the thing was to have the podcast was for people to tune in and check it out and listen and get to meet the band and know who they are and what they have going on and things like that. And so as the pandemic is over with, I'm still able to go out now and, and meet them where they are and interview them and let people know, you know, what the project is and when's it going to come out and, and when they're going to be on tour and things like that. So it's just constantly trying to connect people to what we have going on here. And so 
that's what this whole thing is. This whole project is basically connecting everyone else that may not have heard of Chico, that may not know about this little town here, but they find out once they get here, it's like it's a lot of music, a lot of fans that are like a lot of people here that are really in love with you know playing and and seeing live music it's a it's a lifestyle people love go out to see live music people love to get in the pit people love to you know have a good time man. and this it's usually all ages there's usually venues here that are all ages so you know you can bring your kids there if you want or you can you, you're you and your friends you know you're probably still in high school everybody can come and have a good time and so that's the thing that people see that they really enjoy because not every venue is all ages in most places and so it's just it's more people it's more fun it's 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 vibrant and that's the thing just letting people know how vibrant this place is and you should definitely be a part of it and come and check it out whether you're playing in a band or just coming to check it out but either way you can't miss it's going to be awesome and so that's the whole plan of you know chico area metal and that heavy metal podcast so just interviewing all the local bands as much as i possibly can and have them you know talk about their influences their inspiration you know and and what inspires their their music and and when's the new music coming out and when they can expect to see you know the play in this area and that area and be on the lookout for it and so yeah it, and and definitely and i've i've gotten a really warm welcoming response for everything that i've been willing to do to help put you know the scene you know out there as much as possible so it's really dope because it's like a it's something that i'm doing that i'm passionate about and you get to see that other people will see you for for doing that you know what i mean so it's really That's dope awesome. yeah definitely come on down whenever you get a chance yeah i gotta see that well man <laughs> we're gonna wrap it up but i want you to give your social media to, and let people know where they could find your podcast and also your youtube and just any information you want to get out there to the people all right no problem so if you love horror movies definitely check out horror flicks and chill on uh youtube and as well as instagram uh, as far as um chico area metal we're on instagram we're on facebook it's a facebook group chico area metal and then on instagram is chico area metal and then um for the podcast you can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts that heavy metal podcast but um usually you'll go to spotify i would say go to spotify for the podcast for sure but we're basically anywhere that you listen to podcasts but spotify is the one that i usually plug the most that heavy metal podcast thank you man and before we go what advice would you give you know just to anybody i always leave on that note like what what advice or just like a word of wisdom would you give to anyone or to all of us or to any yeah anyone I'm trying to... oh man uh, <laughs> I don't... Do you here's the thing you trudge like your way like you just kind of you got out of the pond and it was amazing that you did that and then you came all across the country and and basically started you know you cultivated this scene if not started it there's something that goes along with that to me that's definitely a god a godlike thing and 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 just something very positive so i don't know man what advice would you give for anyone especially because okay. some people aren't gonna leave you know <laughs> like or, or they'll just be stuck in their own thing i don't know well i would well, all right well then i would say go for it like literally just go for it like there's there's nothing really stopping you to be honest uh, go for it so whatever it is that you really are passionate about or something that's been in the back of your mind and you kind of put it back there because you feel like there's certain limitations or people are going to make fun of you or people's not going to understand it don't pay attention to that just just go for it literally go for it and that, that's funny because i tell people that all the time like go for it do it you know that like you know there's a lot of creative people that are out here that are sitting on talent but you know they kind of they kind of allow other things and you know people to kind of get into their head sometimes and it's like no go for it literally do it like that's what you want to do do it and with social media it's so easy now to mm -hmm. well not saying it's it's definitely a way for you to make a platform for yourself to put out whatever it is that you're passionate about doing like for me talking about horror movies, I can do that. And I'm meeting and networking with so many other people. And that, 
there's metal and there's music and things like that. And you can find your way. If you're a photographer and you love music, you can go to these shows and take photography so of actual people playing live. And you can post that on Instagram and let people know what you, what you got going on. And then it opens up a whole new thing for you where you can network with other people where like bands are looking for photographers for, you know, for publicity, like for, for like publicity stills or, or uh, from album covers and things like that. You can always just go for it, whatever it is, do it and you'll be amazed at the niche that you're in, how you can network with other people. And that that's gonna feel, that's gonna fuel the fire. That's gonna keep you going even more because you're, you're in the right room with people, you know, thanks to TikTok and Spotify, I mean, uh, Instagram and all these, all these apps. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. It's not just for you to, you know, take selfies all the time. It's not always just for you to take a picture of your food. I mean, you can do that. <laughs> know that you're doing photography right now. Like if you're doing Snapchat, right? That's you filming a, a few seconds of you doing something. So you might as well get into filmmaking or, or videography or some, something that deals with like video and film. Like every, all these apps are kind of spoon feeding you certain like talents that you don't even realize that you're working with right now. If, as, as, as much as you are working on updating and posting, you're doing something that could give you more of a, of, of, of a platform. So if you're posting about this and that, that could be a blog for you. You're basically blogging. Yep. Blogging, whatever you're posting about, that's what you're passionate passionate about then you can have a whole blog about that or a vlog you can go on youtube and you can talk about it and, and put your face out there or get a podcast where you and your friends can talk about whatever is happening in, in culture and politics and music or or fact or whatever it is literally just go for it there's honestly nothing stopping you there's not any gatekeepers anymore like there that doesn't exist anymore that's a person with an opinion and a lot of times they can get drowned out by other people who you have their opinion too. So no one's really, there's not a lot of gatekeeping like it used to be. Like it, it, there's no one really telling you that you have to be this in order to do that anymore. You really don't. So that I would say go for it. it it's the best, that's the best way I can explain it. It's just, if you're on this, if you're on these apps, you're using tools that could really honestly get you you know where you need to be you just have to see it in that particular way you know you have to kind of recognize that hey if i'm you know pulling my phone out and i'm filming something like that could kind of lead to me filming being a film maybe or you know doing a documentary or something like that it could always lead to something more but always go for it no matter what it is that you want to do literally do it like i travel cross country because that's what i wanted to do there was nothing really stopping me you know and so i wanted to be involved in the music scene here and i have and i i've been having a blast doing it and i'm learning things as i'm going along like when i booked my first show like that was it was literally just like it just felt like yeah i've been you know supporting everything that's been happening i've been you know posting and letting people know when that show and that show is happening how about i book a show how do i do that? and once i did that this whole year i've been booking shows this entire year has been consistent non-stop i've done probably 11 shows out of this entire entire year which has been like be a show a month basically and it's 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 been getting even more and there's more events that i'm basically booking for for 2024 it's been constantly happening there's people from other 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 states other towns that you know want to book shows with me here in this town so it's just go for it do it you never know where it takes you just go for it that's the that's rad man that is so cool that's that's I like doing, I like, man, I just dig that. And, and I know it's going to encourage people, man, you know, like, cause cats definitely need that. You know, we all have creativity, you know, the most high gave us creativity and, and we just have to use it and that, and you're using it, man. And shoot, man, with that, thank you. It's an honor to have you, bro. Thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you. Oh man, you cut out. Oh, it's an honor to 
to be on this too, man. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I'm I'm glad that we had this conversation. And and thank you for uh, opening the door for me to be in this uh, platform with you and and be able to talk about what what we're influenced by, what we're inspired by, and things like that. Like it's it's awesome. Uh, I'm glad that you have the the space that you have to have other creatives come on here and discuss you know what they're passionate about and, and they, it, the conversation flows naturally as you can see <laughs> you know and yeah, most definitely you did it. that's what you wanted to do and you did it so <laughs> and you're still doing it so thanks, there you go. thanks i really appreciate it man shoot man <laughs> <laughs> and I have to I have the mask on. <laughs> you know, I had to I had to make it special. You know, dude, you should have saw Jared last night. What's up, Donut? That's one of my sounds, man. I'm a part of a crew called Sound Army Crew, and he's one of them. Jared had me had some really cool thing on. He he had a superhero thing going on last night. Jared, you didn't see this earlier, but check this out, homeboy. I came on like this. Wait, let me let me put it on and show off a little bit. I put the I was me, Megan. Yeah, I got to put the hat on yeah. too. I got the Lethal Amounts LA hat. Shouts to to Danny. <laughs> Jared, check me out, homeboy. You thought I was joking when I said I had a mask. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I'm a nuisance, man. Dude, but thanks again, man. <laughs> you should watch the video. you see what Jared had on last night. I'm like, what the heck? How's he making his face do that? The brother's a superhero, man. <laughs> but yeah, it's time. Down another time, too. For sure. Yeah, that'd be rad, man. Definitely. But man, God bless you. And be safe, you guys. Black History of Rock and Roll Month. We're celebrating our first year celebrating Black History of Rock and Roll Month. Rock and madness out here in these streets. We have Alex Arson. That's right, homeboy. In the house. <laughs> Even though both of us are really in the house. But <laughs> <laughs> Man, say that again. You cut out, bro. Like, what was <laughs> In the house store, literally. Yeah. Literally. literally. Well, peace to you guys all, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again, Alex. God bless you, brother. Peace.